I haven't covered Project for the Web in a while, but there's two updates that you really should know about. So let's have a look. The first update is more of an announcement. Microsoft has decided to uh, change the name of Project for the Web into Microsoft Planner. And Planner is already an application, right? Sadly, I don't have a crystal ball for what it actually means for us in the future. But this article, of which I have a link in the show notes, of course, is one way to take a look at what Microsoft is envisioning for the future for Project for the Web and uh, Planner at large. Uh, there's also a, a long playlist that I've also linked in the show notes that you can uh, take a look at and see if there is anything to your liking. One of the things that I'm very excited about is the ability to add Copilot, of course. Um, then there is also the ability to um, have that full scale um, ability that is to have that full vision of going from an idea, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, with a loop component growing into a task list, growing into a planner board, growing into an actual project in the future. I would really like to see that happen. Uh, with that last step still not available, but hopefully soon that will be uh, available for us. Here's a little teaser. The rollout timeline for the new planner is early 2024 and later in 2024, we'll see changes happening to the web experience as well. For the second update, we're actually going to go into project for the web itself. And for this, we of course have a simple project that we started using the template. And this new feature in project for the web is one that we've all been waiting for is one that we've been waiting for of course ever since we had the four different types of dependencies available into the system let me show you what i mean we have the depend uh, dependence and we have the depends on and here we already see what is happening and what the new feature actually is going to give us because we see that there is a new way to add more value to your dependencies within tasks. So we have we now have the option to add lead and lag time inside our dependencies. Now this doesn't look fancy in uh, the grid view but as soon as we go to the timeline view, you will start seeing those lag and lead time a lot better. Here we see that lead time is three weeks. So let me show you that again. Um, there's a dependency, finish the start, and there is a lead time of three weeks. So we can start this task only after uh, task number six has ended but we have a lead time of three weeks. So as soon as I move this out, I would have expected this to pick up. Let me remove the other dependency. Can I still remove the other dependency? Let's go. Let's see. I'm going to remove this dependency. Let's go to the timeline again. I would have expected to see this Ah, there we go. So yes, here we see that the dependency is moving together with the other lead time with the other dependency. And I do have a little bit of a lag in my uh, browser, I think. Um, let's take another look at lag and, lag and lead time. How do we set that up inside the grid view? If we go to grid. Let's create two additional tasks. Task one, task two. Let's have them both be two weeks. And let's make sure that they are dependent on each other Add dependency. So the normal dependency that we see is that we are dependent on number 15. And here we see that 
the depends, so the successor as we know it from Project uh, for the Web, uh, well, Project Online and Microsoft Project is uh, depends after a column here. I can hide that column just to look at the predecessors as we know that from previously. Uh, so it depends on 15 finish to start. So if I click on this button here, I get more information about that task. I can add labels assigned to, uh, set priority, add a bucket. Of course, we all know that from previous videos. And here we see that I have a depends on. And we have the option to open that up, create a drop down. And if I look at the current scenario here, it tells me a little bit more about that dependency. If I click on a start to start, it changes and it changes that it's not no longer a driver for that task, which is interesting. Um, oh, and now it disappeared because I clicked on the wrong one. So let's have a finish to start dependency on 15 and don't start immediately but let's have a oh. <laughs> but let's have a delay and we can have a delay type of either immediate lead time and lag time so if we lead by it happens earlier in time chronologically and if we have a lag time we actually need to wait longer so let's change that and add two weeks here and let's see that inside our timeline here we see that task. It takes us two weeks. Let's start that task in a nice full week. That looks a lot better. And here you see that task takes us two weeks. Then we have two weeks of lag time. And then we have the other task running in two weeks as well. We can also open up the icon here or the task details page here. We can change that up a little bit. We can change this to one week. And we can set that to lead time. And now you see that curling up re really nice with the second week of that task one uh, corresponding together with the first week of task two. I'm very happy that we now have lag and lead time in Project for the Web. And I'm looking forward to see what the product team is able to do together with Planner to do tasks as a whole. Let me know if you're excited about this new feature inside Project Photo Web and I hope to see you next time.